Hi, I'm Matt Callingham from Pass, and today we're at this beautiful location called Halsley Hall, which is nestled in a beautiful countryside of North Yorkshire. We're going to be meeting a gentleman called Sean Mooney, who is part of the UK Pest Technician Association and the UK Bee Removers. We will also be joined by our resident sales manager, David Atkins, who's our specialist in thermal imaging technology. Together, they're going to be using the Fleur C5 thermal imaging camera to find and locate these bees safely and efficiently. Come with us on this journey as we delve into the realms of bee removal using thermal imaging technology. So, Sean, obviously, you know, we're both dressed in bee suits, um, looking at bees with a thermal camera. So, can you just run through what you'd normally do when you come to a situation like this with a thermal camera? So, these bees within this address are here because of, um, because of the sun, their availability of the sun. You have to remember that bees are small and they are pretty much thermal powered. Yeah. So they pick a spot where they are going to get early morning sunshine and they're going to get lots of it and they'll pick places which are insulated. So this roof is ideal, you've got your lead roof here, yeah. um, underneath it you've got your sarkin boards and you've got a lovely void, a lovely cavity for them to occupy. Now the one thing that we have to be careful of when we're dealing with bees is that where they are living, where they have built their nest, is not always where they are entering. Right. So on this job here, yeah, you could have had it in the top of the cavity wall. It's not a cavity wall, but imagine it was. You could have top cavity wall, bottom cavity wall. You could have it in here. So that although the bees give us a good idea of where the colony is, they don't actually show us where it is. So we need to know exactly where it is so that we can plan how we're going to take it out. Yeah. Um, so if you look at your thermal camera now. So just go back to that then. So you can identify where they're going in from the external side, yeah. 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 which with a thermal camera you may not always pick up, yeah. yeah. but obviously then once you locate them, you can then do an internal survey and yeah. get a clearer picture about. Exactly, so the, the bees tell us a general area, but won't tell us where they are. Yeah. The thermal camera tells us exactly where the heart of that colony is. Right. The heart of the colony is where they are raised and brewed and they're gonna keep it at a very specific temperature. So looking for the temperature tells you exactly where the centre of the infestation is. Right. So yeah, as uh, as we get closer, you can see there's quite a lot, can't you? But what first brought your attention to using the thermal camera for the detection of bees? Just just the heat that they raise. We know that they keep these colonies, the centre of the colonies, at a particular temperature, mm. and we know that um, that 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 the size of the colony will raise the ambient temperature mm. around it by a couple of degrees. So it was, it's a no-brainer really to use thermal. That If you didn't use thermal on this job, yeah. you would be back to the old school days of maybe using a stethoscope listening right. for the buzzing, yeah. or drilling lots of exploratory holes with a boroscope and looking for the colony that way. But imagine if you started having to drill a lot of holes in this oh, lead yeah, roof. It comes expensive, doesn't it? The whole roof yeah. has to come off. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this way I'm going to lift up this section here and probably reduce the amount of yeah. um, money that so is So it's that time the saving, the old visual aspect, just instantly Absolutely, that helps yeah. you detect straight Absolutely, away. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So I've seen some of the images here. I know obviously we're, we're stood outside externally, but when we get inside, it brought my attention to how big and much radiation that these bees give off. You yeah. know, the, and I think, what's your biggest colony that you've probably detected with a thermal camera, or maybe even the smallest? Yeah, so, well, hold that thought yeah because i'll right. show you the smallest um but yeah on the big ones you have to remember as well though that this that the thermal the thermal technology is only going to show you where the heat is right and this is why it's important that we understand the outer perimeters of it because if that brood nest is in the back mm. but it's been here for years and years and there's lots of stores that the bees aren't crawling over this honeycomb could come all the way out Right, with good, no yeah. heat temperature, so it gives with a centre, but then we then go back to our more invasive um, manner. But it means that we don't have to take the whole place apart to find out where we're going to start at. So, Sean, now we've been outside the property, you're going to take us inside to see where the colonies actually is in the, in the internal structure of the building. Yeah, so as much as we've looked from the outside, 
you can clearly see that you oh, have yeah. your own thermal signature internally. And it's important to do it because if this was a flat roof, if you didn't have this step in it below you, um, above your bay, this could be going back into the ceiling of the room. Right. So it's important to understand exactly what's going on internally as well as externally. The last thing you want to do is open up the roof cavity um, to find you can only take half the colony out. Mm. You've then got to come inside and cause major damage within the room. Mm. Um, so yeah. You, you See, I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when you're looking at it instantly. Yeah. Um, from like a building perspective, for a building surveyor, you know, they, they might miss that. I'm right. not suspected to be anything of, of a, a bees or or wasps or whatever it may be. You know, they'd, they'd probably put it down as a pipe or something under there, but you can clearly see, can you? Oh yeah, yeah, and the, these colonies will get bigger and stronger. So this has been in for a year. Next year, the year after, that heat signature will become larger and larger mm. and larger to a point where we've got some photos and I'll share them with you, where the whole bay window is lit up. Right. The whole bay window, um, roof spacing in the bay windows. So today we're out with the Fleur C5, which is one of Fleur's most compact thermal imaging cameras. Um, very lightweight, pocket sized, ideally designed for engineers, electrical contractors, plumbing, uh, HVAC engineers. It's a very simple, straightforward device, but gives great results. Uh, got a 160 by 120 detector, uh, thermally sensitive to plus or minus uh, two degrees. It's packed with great, simple features with, uh, you know, touch screen. So we've got MSX mode, which is a digital and thermal overlay of the image. So it brings out more detail. It's got uh, just thermal image, which obviously a lot of people don't use now the MSX is involved. And then we've got, uh, you know, picture in picture, which is a digital and thermal overlay of the image. Okay. Uh, other modes, measurement mode, um, if we can go in there. We've got Ignite, which is a cloud-based um, platform specifically for the C5 because it will store the images directly. But if you've got multiple users, they can share the data through the cloud-based software. So if you have multiple engineers around the country, different sites, different locations, they can all log in, store the files and the information and they can share the content between themselves so it's really really innovative in terms of what Fleur have done with this device um, and then basically if we go through the settings of the camera we've got uh, a different array of color palettes okay which uh, I can take you through just now Everything from your standard one, from iron bow to rainbow to arctic to white hot to black hot, what you pretty much find in any thermal camera. Um, different measurement points, so you can have just a cursor, you can have uh, the hottest part of the image, the coldest part of the image. And then, last but not least, we've got one touch um, auto or manual level and span which is normally only found on the more expensive cameras, but Fleur have gone all out with this one and put it in the, uh, the lower end cameras. Um, we can bring up the image files. So once you've taken an image, you can have a look at them, you can go through them, you can store them, you can remove them. And as you can see there, just from the image that we've took earlier, that's just a little pipe within the cavity of the wall. And it gives you a great indication just from such a basic thermal camera, you can get such good results. So the Fleur C5 is designed to be Fleur's top ruggedized pocket thermal camera. It's self-contained, no screws. It's basically designed to be in your toolbox when you're out on site. So one, you've got reliability that if you drop it, because of its ruggedized nature, you're not going to break it. Everything is self-concealed. Uh, self so you don't have any bits that can break off. You've also got the ability to tripod mount it if you wished, but again, it's all self-contained. Simple USB-C port. If we go around to the lens itself, there's nothing there that can actually hinder or scratch the lens, yeah? If you look, it's got an indentated cover, so it's specifically designed for nothing to disturb that lens, scratch that lens, damage that lens in any way. We've got a built-in 
LED light here. We have a catch here for the lanyard, so you can put it on your arm or you can put it on a belt strap. So all in all, it's the ideal tool for any ruggedized environment where the camera is going to be totally protected. Fleur have really pushed the boat out on this camera. <clears throat> you know, there isn't many on the marketplace that offer this kind of protection for when you're out on site and you're in harsh environments, hazardous areas where, you know, you've got the reliability of a camera that's not going to let you down. Where are you taking us now? So this is another bedroom and I was contacted by the guy who said that he thought there was a third colony in this building, not just the original two, um, because he saw bees hanging around the bay window. But if you shine your camera up there. Oh yeah, straight away again, yeah. So this is a little bit different. Um, this heat source here is actually created by a bumblebee's nest. You'll see the behavior is different and the bees look a little bit different. They're a little bit rounder, they're a little bit larger and they're quite hairy. Um, this, col this colony here is actually causing um, honey to run. Now, I have never before had a honeybee col a bumblebee colony where honeys run through the windows or doors because they're so small, right. which will give you a general idea of how small that colony is. So is this the honey then, Sean, yeah? Yeah, you can see the honey dropping from above and it's coming down, it's hitting the, the windowsill yeah. and the flooring. Um, there's, two, there's two possible answers to this. One is that this bumblebee colony has failed in part and is causing this honey to run. The other, which is a solution that we don't really want it, want it to be, is that this has previously be, had a honeybee colony in there and there's a lot of honey up there and the bumblebees are disturbing it or they've warmed it up, something's going on. So you touched on base there that there could be uh, honey from an existing colony then? From an old colony, yeah. yeah. So would that not have maybe shown up on a thermal camera or would the heat signature have totally gone from that then? Exactly, so the heat signature is created by the living bees and the living brood within it. Once that signature is gone, then there is no um, there is no way to find it without going um, explore, dr d drilling exploratory holes. What we will often say to customers is if they have a bumblebee problem, they may get a secondary um, problem with moths a year, two years, three years later. And it's very easy to forget where that bumblebee colony is. So these can probably be left in place um, with no worry because they're going to die out naturally, mm. probably by the end of July. With a thermal cut, with a thermal camera, it's easy to take that picture, especially if you go picture in picture. Yeah, you know where it is. If you then develop a bee moth problem at a later date, you know exactly where to go to take it out. Because in two, three years' time, it it, it can become really difficult, and where people remember where it's been, where it hasn't been, um, can does change, not can change, it does change. We've been there on numerous occasions. So using that and surveying it, even if you're not going to take it out, but just so that you know exactly where it is, should it need to be taken out later that day, it's really helpful. So that's one of the key things, isn't it? When you've took the image as well, you're going to get a, a thermal uh, image, you're going to get your digital image, or you could use your picture in picture. Mm -hmm. And then from the reporting side, which we've not really touched on then, so once you've taken that image, um, part of what you're carrying out for the customer, do you then provide them with that report? Oh, absolutely, so the, the way we do it is that before we would even look at taking the tiles off or taking that roof off that, we'll provide them with a full a full report which details every option that's available from leaving the honeybees in place, um, trapping them out, cutting them out, the pros and cons of every single scenario that they have and we'll give them a quote for the work to be done. And those pictures really do help because it's very difficult to look at a bay window and understand the severity of the problem. But if that colony's been in for any length of time and you, you look at it, mm. the thermal just explains it immediately. But there's no words to describe what a thermal camera will show the homeowner in relation to the severity. Of the yeah, home. that's it, isn't it? Once, yeah. once people have got a, a visual aspect of what's happening, Absolutely. you know, it, it's not just words, it's not just text, it's 
yeah. look this is a picture of what we're seeing there yeah. you can totally identify that there is you know a colony up there you know I can do it before and after just to say that look you know we safely identify them and then we've safely removed them or even like you say which I wasn't aware that if they come back again yeah you know yeah, and yeah. Uh, if it like this one you've illustrated there if that honey uh, is still in the loft you may get moths or whatever and then they may come back because obviously that honey's there and which is you know no doubtably attracting them back absolutely yeah the the honeybee and any any bee can smell honey like a fly can smell rotten meat they're on it within minutes right so in a couple of weeks time you would think that the honeybees were following my van round because whenever i pull up they're just there and it's because they can smell it that fast they're on it so they they miss nothing and you get these you, you do get these reinfestations of these problems and it's but a good job you don't have bears around here because i'm sure they'll be chasing after the van as well ah uh, uh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah but no it's really 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 informative and you know it's opened our eyes and uh, you know how efficient thermal cameras yeah. are for yeah. this line of work you know but the other thing as well is it it really helps from a health and safety point of view because <clears throat> Typical example, that colony at the front of the house. A lot of people will think, especially the, the one where the slates is, oh, you can go up on a ladder and you can push a couple of slates back and you'll be able to take it out. When you're trying to explain to the customer that it's a far larger job than that, um, it's very easy to demonstrate that so they can see that doing that job off a ladder and trying to cut corners isn't going to cut the mustard. You're going to have to do it properly and you're going to need a substantial scaffolding in place to get everything out and to do that job to the standards that they Well, I, I would never have thought for one minute that I'd be arriving today at a property and it had scaffolding and steps and everything yeah. in, but I suppose from a ground point of view, if you're going to arrive with a thermal camera and open people's eyes up to how clearly they can see a colony from mm -hmm. a safe level and then you know in order to deal with that you're going to have to go through that process yep. you know and yep. from a safety point of view it's really 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 you know made me look at this in more detail but you know i'm i'm really pleased that they just even a simple thermal camera like this can give you the that sort of image quality and identification from the off absolutely yeah So quite an exciting day today, Sean. Um, we're back on the rooftop, and today we're gonna you're gonna be dealing with the extraction of the colony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why is it important to get your first thing early on a morning and uh, start, you know, removing the slates and the rooftop and everything to extract the colony? Yeah. So it it always depends on the time of the at the time of the season in relation to summer is what time we would look to start. Um, the best time to deal with bees is probably between 10 and 4 o'clock. As a honeybee develops, it starts off and at the first point of coming out of the cell, it can't actually fly, it's, it's flightless, it has no sting, mm. and no ability to sting you. And these develop over time. So the oldest bees are genu generally the most aggressive, they have the most developed set, um, venom glands, and they are the most sacrificial to the colony. So if something tries to get in, the older bees will often be the ones that attack leaving the younger bees and the future of the colony behind. At 10 o'clock, a lot of those older bees, which are flying bees, are out foraging. They're looking for food and they're gonna bring it back. So if you open between 10 and four, you're gonna have a different colony. The issue is that as the summer goes on, the bees become absolutely obsessed with honey and I'm pretty confident you're gonna see it today. It's not a guarantee, but it is, I'm relatively confident, around about 10 o'clock, maybe even before, they'll see what we call robin. And what'll happen there is because we've broke that honey, that honeycomb and that, that smell of honey is in the air. Every bee in this area knows where every other colony so it's is. It's not for us to get it on our clothes. They're, they're, oh, they're gonna, yeah, you, you, we're not gonna not be able to not get it on our clothes. Right. We're gonna be covered, but you will see lots and lots of bees turning up. And it's quite interesting because we can get away with it in this environment because there's no neighbors. Mm. But if you're doing this, a, a, a late summer extraction in a domestic area, in an estate or something like that, it's just dangerous. You can't do them because that many bees will turn up. And what, it, just literally that aggressive even. Well, no, it's just um, they're not the bees which turn up aren't aggressive because they're just coming in for food. It's the bees within the colony as they're trying to defend it and fight and the, that's the their raiding sole bees. Off. Yeah, to that. That, and that's what they're doing. Yeah, so for them it's a bit of a nightmare. So what we're going to do today is we're going to open it up. Um, there'll probably be a bit 
snarky to start off with and then you'll probably find that as we get into it they'll calm down but as they calm down more bees will arrive but hopefully we're going to get through the vast majority of it we're going to really hit them hard and try and get through it quickly if everything goes to plan that being said if it does turn up with lots and lots of bees here it's not the end of the world everyone's yeah, it's aware a, it's a very we're, big open yeah, space exactly yeah, we're yeah. miles and miles away from anyone so we'll we'll be fine and it's that risk assessment isn't it of everything you're doing yeah well you've filled me with loads of confidence so what we're going to do is we're going to sit back let you go about your business and hopefully and safely get these bees removed yeah you can see some of the bees dropping down the back they're telling you where they are look they're giving themselves away straight away all right We're lifting this up and we're going to hopefully reveal these colonies, some sarkin boards underneath. We're going to find this colony. It's under here. So if I take this one. Is that, yeah, they're going to go. They're going to get a bit upset at that. See them come to your hands. This is propolis. This is tree sap. The bees use it to... Um, what? The bees use it to um, line, their, line their cavities. But it has um, antibacterial properties as well. And they basically use it to stick everything together. See the bees eating it straight away. We don't want to lose it. So what we'll do is we'll break some honey and we'll let them settle on it. And the more they eat, they'll probably calm down quite a bit forward. Look at that. <laughs> we know this colony's been in. We know this colony's been in here for a year. No, nope, this is where we are. Ah, right. This is this is drone comb here. This is drone comb. This is all stores, this is all honey. This is why we tell people all the time not to leave a colony in place. These, these bees have built this structure since the start of summer. That's it. That's how long it's taken them. Imagine if we'd left these in for 10 years. They never stop. So, Sean, you mentioned that this was a small colony, but I'm not going to put you for an exact figure, but how many bees do you think is in this then? Uh, 20, 25,000 bees. Right, really. Worker bees, yeah. That's what you're probably looking at. Um, and they will keep building. They won't ever stop building. And just get bigger and bigger in terms of colony, yes. more larva. So what, as I was saying earlier about the life cycle of a bee, it gets through to that point where it is the defensive um, foraging bee. They start off when they're born, and their first job is to look after the colony. Then it's to feed young, etc. And they get to a point in their life cycle where they're what we call wax producers. Their job is to produce wax. So as long as there is a growth of bees, there will always be a growth of wax. They don't ever stop, so the yeah. colonies just get bigger so and that, bigger. So that term, literally, busy as a bee, is busy as a bee because they never stop there. Eh? Yeah, they never stop. Mm. And of course, they don't sleep. During the hours of darkness, they're still working. They're just doing a different job. Yeah, because you're under the impression that the, you know, the, the, they become dormant. But no. you know, we got here what six o'clock this morning, and they were still quite not as active, but still going in and out. So you tend to find during the night that they start curing the honey. So when nectar comes in, it's 20% um, sugar and 80% water. Right. What the bees have to do is they have to fan that down and they take it down to being 20 and even lower, sometimes 15, 14, 13% water, and the rest is sugar, and that's what gives it its ability to get through the winter. Yeah. yeah. If the water... It's just yeah. like a beauty, isn't it? It's lovely that, that. That, that's the brand new comb being built next to it. This ah, is how it starts, right. you see. Yeah. You know, just, I'm being a little braver than I normally would here because I'm nicely protected by this lovely suit. Oh, fingers crossed, hopefully. But yeah, uh, Sean's just been explaining there that this one is a, a new colony that's going to be starting. But yeah, just I, a no, it's thing not of beauty and plenty, uh, plenty in there as well. 
So the idea is we're going to be removing this colony and then Sean's going to safely take them away and uh, let them be in a lovely pleasant probably field somewhere and let them get about doing the business and creating more of this. Well that concludes our project here at Holsley Hall where we're able to locate and remove a bee colony safely and efficiently. For more information on thermal imaging cameras, visit our website at www.tester.co.uk where you'll find a range of thermal imaging cameras that will suit all budgets. Once again, I'm Matthew Kelling from PASS and thank you for coming along with us on this journey.